2.3, the product rule. So this is a continuation of the basic skills that you will learn in this chapter then, and that you will use to do many different things with calculus. So these rules, although they may seem pretty, um, pretty basic, there are a lot of challenging questions with them and you need to be able to manipulate these equations really well in order to have success in the rest of the book. So I highly recommend you do more than your teacher asked you to do and make sure that you've got this, um, these lessons really well polished before you move on. So the product rule, there is a proof in your textbook. Um, when I teach the course, I do go through the proof because it's part of the curriculum requirements. But once you've seen it, you probably won't do it again. So read it in your book, make sure you understand it. But basically all it says is that if you have the product of two functions, that you take the first and multiply the derivative of the second, and then the second times the derivative of the first. Now your teacher might do it the other way around. Maybe they'll do the derivative of the first times the second and the other way as well. So um, all it means is that you're taking the derivative of one and leaving the other one alone and they're adding the opposite. Okay, so the reason the product rule doesn't work, um, like say I said y equals x squared, you know the derivative of y prime here would be 2x. The derivative of y, y prime is 2x. And you could also say that y is equal to x times x. And if you did these individually, of course, you'd get 1 times 1, which is not 2x. So that's why they needed a product rule. Okay, so let's apply the product rule here. So we have the first. So I'm going to write this one out. When I say first, you just write it out times the derivative of the second. The derivative of this, the entire thing, is just 1. Derivative of the constant, 0. So I just have times 1, so I don't have to write anything. So first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of this would be 6x. Derivative of 1, 0. <clears throat> okay. So usually you are required to expand and simplify. <clears throat> There's some questions in this textbook that say do not simplify. So make sure you're reading the rules. So just add them all up, put them together, and there you go. Okay, so don't forget as you change to the derivative, you must write g prime x. So I'm going to do the first. So I write it out times the derivative of the second. The derivative of this would be 2x minus 2 plus the second times the derivative of the first, <clears throat> 24x to the fifth. Now, you may be asked to expand this and simplify. Um, well, we'll do it this time, but I'm not going to do a lot of them because um, <clears throat> that's basic math and you don't really need me to show you how to do that, right? So I get 8x to the seventh minus 8x to the sixth plus 4x minus 4, and now I have to expand this one. So I have 24x, um, what did I have here? Oh, that's just 24x to the fifth. Can't read my own writing. So I have 24x to the seventh plus 48x to the sixth. And then you would combine um, your x to the sixth here. So... That was wrong right here at the beginning. That's a great job, Miss Havrat. That's 8x to the 7th. I have to add the exponents. Minus 8x to the 6th. Okay, so I have uh, 32x to the 7th. Minus 8 and plus 48. It would be 40x to the 6th. I have no 5s. I have to the power of 1 and the constant. Okay, so yeah, it's a little bit lengthy, isn't it? That's why sometimes it says, do not simplify. Okay, the other rule that shows up here, and it's not in the title, but it's probably the more important one, is the power of a function rule. <clears throat> so this says that if I have a function that's raised to an exponent, then the derivative of that would be n times g at x to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside. 
So it's a type of chain rule that we do a little bit later, and I don't know why they don't do that all at the same time, but needless to say, that's the way it goes. So let's look at a really easy one here. So the rule says I take seven to the front, I leave this alone, I reduce the exponent by one, and then I have to take the derivative of the inside. So that gives me 12x minus 5. Okay, so be really careful. Sometimes uh, students will do this part and they forget to take the derivative of this. So that's this part here. What happens when you have to apply the power of a function rule and the product rule? So this is going to get really long. I hope I left enough room here. So let's write it over here a little bit. Y prime equals, so I'm going to write out the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of this one is going to be 3. So I'm applying that power of a function rule first. Reduce the exponent by 1. And then I have to take the derivative of the inside. So that was just the first times the derivative of the second. Right? So I just did, that was pencil eraser mark. First times the derivative of the second. Now I, you know, I'm not done yet. Now I have to do the second times the derivative of the first. So you can see how these questions can get really long. x cubed to the third times negative 3x squared. Okay, so there it is without having it simplified. Now, I'm pretty sure later on they expect you to simplify this because it's really hard to... Um, like you should be looking for common factors and pulling them out. But we'll do more of that later when the textbook asks, asks you to. Okay, so let's do some more of this. Find the equation of the tangent. Never ends, does it? Okay, so we have a product. There's no power of a function rule here. So I'm just doing the first times the derivative of the second. So I'm going to write all that out. So here's the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of 3x squared minus 2x, that's going to be 6x minus 2. First times derivative of the second. Plus, don't forget, don't stop. It looks like sometimes you feel like you've done enough, right? So here's the second times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared and then minus 5 and the rest is a constant. <clears throat> so if I'm trying to find the equation of the tangent at this point, I have a point, but I need slope. Okay, anytime you're finding a tangent, you think point, slope. Okay, so this is the derivative, but I want to know what is the derivative when x equals 1. So I'm finding the slope at this point. So now I plug in 1 here to find the slope. You, uh, you can see that you, you wouldn't need to simplify this to plug in a 1, right? Okay, let's go. I have 1 minus 5, that's minus 4, plus 2 is minus 2. I have 6 minus 2 is 4. I'm plugging in 1, remember? And now I have 3 minus 2, that's 1. And I have 3 minus 5, 3 minus 5 is minus 2. So that's minus 8 minus 2 is minus 10. So that's my slope. Now I have the point and I need the equation. So using y equals mx plus b, I plug in my point. So that's minus 2. My slope was minus 10. My x is 1. Okay, x, y, slope, plus b. So minus 10, I add it to the other side. It gives me b is equal to 8. So y is equal to minus 10x plus 8. Okay, or in standard form, oh, let's do it. Um, usually your a is positive, so we'll bring it over this way. 10x plus y minus 8 equals 0. Okay, so along the way they also ask you to find um, where there is a horizontal tangent. All that means is you want to set y prime equal to 0 because 
a horizontal tangent means you have a slope of zero. So if I wanted to know where this equation had a zero slope, I would set this equation to zero and solve for x. That would be really difficult. Some of them are much easier. Okay, so horizontal tangent, just remember, set y prime to zero. Um, the last question I'm going to do is one that I didn't usually do with my class, but um, it is part of this chapter, so I'm going to show you. It's called the extended product rule. And what you have to do when you're taking the derivative of three things is it, it's kind of like the product rule, except you're going to do, um, you're going to take the derivative of one and then leave these alone. Then you're going to take the derivative of this one, leave these two alone, and then you're going to do the derivative of this one and leave these two alone. So you do piece by piece. So for instance, if I take the derivative of 2x, I would get 2, and then I still have this. I leave all of this by itself. This is a question from your textbook. That's the first part. I'm going to do this three times now. So this time I'm going to leave 2x and I'm going to take the derivative of x plus 1 cubed. So don't forget this is a power rule. So I have 3 and I have x plus 1 and I have to the power of 2. Okay, so 3x plus 1 to the power of 2. The derivative of this is just 1. So I'm going to put these in square brackets so you can see it better. So, and then I have this one here, x squared plus 2x plus 1 squared. Okay, so that's 1. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And I have to do one more. So this time I leave the first two alone, 2x, x plus 1 cubed. And now I take the derivative of this one here. You will never use this later on, believe me. So I have 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 1. It's just a lot of work, isn't it? And then reduce this by 1 gives me 1. And the derivative of the inside. Don't forget the inside part. So I have 2x plus 2. Done. Okay, so it says find the slope at x equals negative 2. So I want to know what h prime is at negative 2. So you have to be really careful here as you're plugging all these in. I'm going to plug in and do each of the brackets. So I have 2 and then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Done. Next one. Negative 2 squared is 4, positive 4, minus 4, that's 0, 1, squared, 1. Okay, moving along here. So I have 2 times negative 2, so I have negative 4. I put in negative 2 here. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 3. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 is 0 plus 1 squared. And that's just 1 again. And then I go to the last one here. So negative 2 times 2 is minus 4. And I have minus 2 plus 1 cubed. That's going to be negative 1. And then I have 2 times... Oh boy, this is a lot of work, isn't it? So that's 4 minus 4 plus 1. That's still 1. And I have minus 4. So 2 times 9, negative 2 is negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. I hope I have this right. I know what the answer is. So if I made a mistake, we'll find it. So minus 2, that's minus 12, and this would be, so I have a negative, a negative, and a negative, so my answer will be negative, so that's 4 times 2 is 8, 8, 16, minus 16. Oh, and I got the answer I was looking for, so that's minus 30. We didn't make a mistake. Now the last part here, it says, how do you find the equation of the normal? Do you know what a normal is? A normal is just a perpendicular to another line. So if I had a slope like this, so this is my line, the normal, you would do lots of this in vectors, so this is the normal, okay? So if I know this slope, well, I did it the wrong way, this would be like positive something, but if the slope is negative 30, let's draw one like negative 30, it's even more steep than that, what is the slope of this line? And I think you remember to find um, a perpendicular slope. It's the negative reciprocal. So 
if this one was, if this slope is minus 30, then this slope would be 1 over 30. So the reciprocal and the negative of it. And that's, so how do you find the equation, the normal? Well, you would use this slope and mm, this point. Where's our point? Oh, minus 2. We don't have the y coordinate. So you'd have to plug this in here to find y. Find, well, find h at minus 2 first. And that will give you a point. Gives a point. So you have point and slope, and that's how you find the equation of a tangent. So I didn't do all the questions. It's impossible for me to do all of them for you, but I hope I've done enough that gives you a good idea on, on the uh, skills that you need to do this lesson. And if there's something that you find that you're having difficulty with, feel free to write a little comment and um, ask me to do a question for you. I'd be more than happy.